The new Nigerian Bar Association, NNBA, has notified the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, of its existence as a splinter group. It said the NNBA's formation followed the Nigerian Bar Association, NBA's alleged failure to uphold national unity in its recent decisions. Last Thursday, two Kaduna-based lawyers, Nuhu Ibrahim and Abdul Basit Suleiman, announced NNBA's formation following the NBA's withdrawal of an annual conference, general conference speaking engagement it offered to Kaduna State Governor Nasr El Rafai, among other grievances. They informed the AGF of their plans in an August 28 letter signed by Ibrahim as convener one and Suleiman as convener two. The NNBA's emergence is another front in recent threats to the NBA's unity in recent times. To look at developments at the NBA, we're now joined by legal practitioners. Libora Sushoma in the studio. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. We're joined virtually by Sani Ibrahim from Kanu and Bafa Alassan from Jigawa State. Uh, uh, Bafa Alassan is the Chairman Caretaker Committee NBA Jigawa. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. All right, let's start with you in the studio, um, Mr. Oshama. The 60th conference has come and gone. One of the key contribution from the outgoing, from the uh, former president now of the NBA uh, was that the one thing he's celebrating was the unity of the NBA. Now that is not the case. What is your reaction to this splinter group? Are there grievances? Are the, are the the moving away, is it justified, considering, of course, that their complaint didn't seem to have gotten uh, the required response from the leadership? <laughs> I, I, you know, all of these old issues are very funny to me. Very, very, very funny. MBA has a lot of um, issues, um, a lot of reasons to create splinter group before now, and but creating a splinter group because of... Um, one politician somewhere, for me, it's um, neither here nor there. There are human rights abuses in Nigeria across the board, and MBA ordinarily ought to be, you know, at the forefront for the fight, you know, um, against human rights abuse, including um, um, the recent incessant harassment of uh, lawyers by police. And MBA has not done anything. I didn't see members creating a splinter group to protest the inactivities of the MBA. Um, the MBA over time, you also see, had been um, almost like um, a lame duck. Um, you see how judges were harassed without regards to the processes of law. And the MBA didn't do anything. Even the CGN of the country was removed via an esparte order. And we all chorused, oh, it's fight against corruption. MBA didn't um, insist that um, you know, due processes must follow. And I didn't see people stand up to say, oh, look, we are creating a splitter group because MBA has lost its voice. And well, but all the, of a the, sudden, the issues that they raise. I see, I hear the, the, the voice of um, Esau, but I see the hand of Jacob in all of these things. It's unfortunate, it's sad. The issues they raise are germane to them. But what I'm saying is that there are even more germane issues that should have gotten that, that should have gotten the attentions of uh, MBA members. At, at, but it's their right to associate. No, nobody, you know, can stop them from associating. But there are issues that you know must be addressed. One of them is it is a notorious fact that MBA issues seals to all members, all right. and and so. If you now have a new MBA, those your, are you going to be issuing seals to your member? Will those seals be recognized by courts and processes? These are but they, they, they don't to seem handled. to be relenting because they've written to the AGF. We'll, we'll come no, back to you um, in a it's, bit. It's, it's, it's Let's okay. go to uh, Mr. Alassan. Now, among the grievances of the new NBA is the recent developments uh, alluded to. Uh, they say it exposed the inability of the NBA to manage and contain the diversity of its members as well as their various interests. Um, uh, Mr. Boris says that there is more 
to, uh, there are more situations that could um, have warranted such a splinter group that never came up. Do you think that the ethnic uh, coloration or sentiment is stronger than the reason being given? Um, Nigeria Bus Association is an association that was created over 100 years ago. And uh, it stood as a unified professional association. I believe NDA is above ethnic or religious affiliations. NDA is an association that is professional in nature, that guides our democracy, that promotes our rule of law, that defends the judiciary. It's an association that is even the voice of the judiciary in this country. Now, for just a reason that uh, Nasser Erufai was disinvited by the net, though regrettable the decision was, is not enough. It's not and will never be enough reason for the dis dis uh, dismemberment of a Nigerian bar association. I, we have regional forums, we have religious uh, groups within the NBA, or I can say within the lawyers, like uh, Muslim Lawyers Association, Christian Lawyers Association, we have uh, a Bay of Wolfing, we have uh, Eastern Bar Forum, we have Ariwa Lawyers Forum. All those are uh, associations that have affinity with either religion or ethnic or sectional groups. Now, can we say these groups who are able to resolve the little agitations we have within the NPA? No. It will be a job taken too far for anyone to even imagine that because of what happened at the neck, that will be a ground for us now to polarize the NPA. It's very important for us as lawyers to remember that Nigerian Bar Association is an association that was recognized by several judicial authorities. Everybody knows the cases of NBA versus K, in the case of Chimo versus Oanda, where, where the court declares that once you choose to become a lawyer, there was an undivided loyalty demanded of you. So how can now one think of uh, creating a splinter group within the NBA for the purpose of promoting uh, ethnicity, religion, please, NBA is uh, far beyond that. I think right. the issue of RFI should not be an issue now. It has gone, it should, it should allow it to go forever. Let's focus more on what will benefit the bank, what will benefit the country, not issues like this. All right, let's bring uh, Mr. Ibrahim in. And still, we're still going to stay with some of the issues that they raised. The Muslim Lawyers Association uh, asked the NBA to remove Obas and Joe and River State Governor Yesom Wike from the list of speakers at the conference that's just uh, uh, finished. Uh, even though they did not, it was obvious that uh, the former president was a no-show and Wike sent a representative is it true speculations that they might have been asked not to attend rather than a slap in the face some say is due to the controversy around the El Rufai? Mr. Ibrahim, can you hear me? Hello? What, what is the question, please? Okay, I'm, I'm talking about the, the speakers. The Muslim Lawyers Association asked that Obasanjo and Wike be, be removed from the list of speakers. The NBA did not do this. Uh, but we also know yeah. that OBJ and Wike yeah. did not appear in person, but Wike sent a representative. Uh, my, my, my question is, there are speculations that this, they might have been asked to not attend rather than a slap in the face, as some say, uh, on the MBA due to the controversy around Aerofi. Okay, I've gotten the question now. You see, let, let me begin by correcting one assertion or anomaly we usually make uh, that MBA is above religious inclination, MBA is above regional inclination, or MBA is uh, above whatever. We, we, we have to learn to tolerate 
religion. We have to learn to tolerate to, to, uh, to tolerate tribe. We have to learn to tolerate so many issues that will now bring anarchy within the association. Being a member of MBA does not mean you are now disenfranchised about your uh, rights that are fundamental. You have freedom of association. If you look at the Constitution, we look at Section 39, we look at Section 40. All these sections are trying to tell you that being a member of MBA does not mean MBA will now dictate whatever you are going to do. So my opinion in this regard is, is that we should just be tolerant in whatever we are doing. The, the, the executive members of the MBA at the national level should now understand that, yes, we have somebody that is coming from Kano, somebody that is coming from Inugu, somebody that is coming from Lagos, or Tapot, and what have you. And then you now associate with these people. Somebody will be a Muslim, somebody will be a Christian, somebody will be maybe washing the sun, the cows, and what have you. You tolerate them. Mr. Ibrahim, point I want to Mr. Ibrahim, uh, let me, let me interject with this question. Yeah. The, the MBA is supposed to be a professional body, right? Should sentiment and ethnicity as well as religion be a consideration when it comes to decision making? Won't that further polarize us? No. 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 Yeah, exactly. This is what I'm saying. Those that are against them or those that are campaigning for new MBA are, are, are just agitating this, their own position because they are now seeing what the ESCO, the executive members at the national level are doing as if this is uh, 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 religiously biased. Nasrul Erupai is a Muslim, is from northern part of the country, and this decision, and Wike is from the southern part, is a Christian. As far as I'm concerned, we should have an MBA that is just meant for members, protecting members, we have the objectives of the MBA. All right. MBA um, has aims and objectives. Okay, I it's, think um, Mr. Oshoma has a reaction to what you just said. Uh, before we move on with other questions, uh, could you uh, speak up? Um, I, I, I grew up in a predominantly Muslim community. And um, as a young child, I didn't know what it was to be strictly Muslim or strictly Christian. As I am now, I can recite some part of the Quran, even though I'm a Christian. I've never been a Muslim. I can say the Fatiha because the Nigeria where I grew up, it wasn't an religion was not a big issue until we started making it an issue, even in leadership. The even assuming, even without considering to the argument of my learned colleague on the other side, Governor Zulum that was used to replace El Rufai, he's a Muslim, he's also from the north. So it was, it's not an issue of, oh, you remove a Muslim. And so we shouldn't highlight, you know, religion. What is basically playing out, I had outlined that the society had been polarized by politicians. And I see the handiwork of politicians in what is playing out also. I agree. I, the, the way the invitation of Air Rufai was handled was poorly handled. It should probably have been debated, even before, I believe that, all of the invitees should have the NEC who probably had debated the issues. The committee ought to have sent the names to NEC. Let NEC agree on all the invitees before the invitations are sent out. Once invitations are sent, sent out and then you uninvite, you know, I believe that's where the problem is. But now creating a splinter group like politicians do uh, on that singular ground alone and now make it a religious issue. What we are indirectly doing, what the, the, the MBA is indirectly doing, is creating opportunities for Nigerians that have been agitating for balkanization of Nigeria. So you now have new uh, MBA in the north. How about the eastern people that have been agitating that they want a Biafra? So they will point easily to the MBA to say, well, because a decision was taken at the MBA and some people said they want to go their own way. So now, 
We also want to go our we'll own that, way. We'll Let us be, have a that would, Isn't that a bit of an, um, an uh, exaggeration? That's what of I'm telling you. See, see let, me t let me tell you. You do not, you can only determine the step here that you take, but you cannot determine the extent that others will read in, into it and the extent that people will go. Nigeria, as we presently speak, is sitting on the keg of gunpowder. The leadership have been accused of nepotism. And so when we further allow all of those religious issues to affect our decisions, you, are, you don't know the extent that people will read into it. And we now begin to say, okay, well, if you can have a new MBA in the North, why can't we have a new MBA in the East? Why can't we have a Southern Army? Why can't we have a Southern Police? Why can't we have a, a Northern uh, Army? So for me, I think the issues like um, my colleague in... Um, um, the other colleague, the uh, uh, former speaker, had said, it has happened. This is a time to come together as a group. There's a strength in unity. This is All a right. time to come together and confront the issues facing the uh, uh, Nigerian lawyers and then the larger society. All right, before I go to... I, I'm quickly, sorry, quickly. All of the issues that have been bedeviling even the North and South... How many of it have we been able to address, even as MBA? All right, let's let's look at. Uh, we'll still we'll look at the MBA a little more if time will permit us. But away from the um, splinter group now, let's talk about some of the developments at the um, Sister Conference. The new MBA president in his inaugural speech on Friday. I'm coming back to you now, um, Mr. Ibrahim. Describes the moves within the association, the splinter group, as unfortunate and called for unity. So, solution conversation. Beyond this call, what further action do you expect from him towards unifying these aggrieved members? You, you, you did say some um, issues should be taken into consideration. Can that be embedded in a solution rather than a separation? Exactly. You see, I am a believer of one MBA. I believe in unity. I believe that we should have one MBA. Because if we are divided, definitely we will be used by politicians to continue uh, uh, disrespecting rule of law and what have you. So I, 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 I personally have this opinion that we should have one MBA. But the way we should have that one MBA, unified MBA, uh, uh, needs more from the president. So you need to go around, call the attention of those that, are be, that feel aggrieved, sit with them, discuss about what happened, and then we, we, we take note of all those that have, for all those things that have maybe engineered the problem at the first instance. Like, uh, in, in, I, I, my, my, my personal opinion is, is that I don't even see reason why we should be inviting politicians into the uh, affairs of MBA when these conferences are made to assist lawyers to, 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 to excel in this noble profession. If you call a politician, he will just come and try maybe to campaign for himself in, in the years to come, maybe 2023, 20, all of them are just trying to use this medium as a, 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 a place where they will now uh, promote their political uh, ideology and what have you. So right. I will say that MBA should stand and go back to the, 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 the constitution what are the objectives that MBA it meant or is created for? Let's have a, a robust, you can even have a committee that will now look at those objectives. What, what, what is the position of young lawyer? A long, young lawyer in Nigeria is some young lawyers. I talked to some long, young lawyers that are receiving only 10,000 naira. All right, you, can, let, you cannot, you will never have a medical doctor, a medical doctor who just graduated and be uh, certified as a medical doctor who is earning less than 100,000. All right, uh, Dr. Ibra um, Mr. Ibrahim, um, offices to work. 
I, I'm sorry I need to interject. Uh, uh, we're almost out of time. And, and, and so friendly. I'll bring in Mr. Alassane uh, to quickly take a look at, you know, the MBA does need some work to uh, unify it. What's your take on uh, Mr. Akpata's first move to set up an electoral audit and reforms committee to audit the body's 2016, 2018 and 2020 election, considering, of course, the questions over the credibility of the uh, July elections that ushered him in? Okay, you see. Um, please bear in mind we are almost we, out of time, so you can Hello? just use uh, like forty minutes, please. Uh, forty seconds, okay. I beg your pardon. Now, what I'm, what I'm saying now is that you see two problems are now affecting our association: the issue of uh, e-voting that this universal suffrage. And the issue of this inviting or inviting Mal and also Erfai, the former governor, I saw the current governor of uh, Kaduna State. Let me start with the first one. The issue of our election. Definitely, we need electoral reforms in MBA. Before we are using delegate system, now we are using reversal suffrage by way of uh, e voting. Now, as this system works with some problems, certainly we need something to be done so that the cries by some members of the association that this election lacks credibility or that is, uh, the election sometimes leads to uh, cases in court is not healthy for our um, association. I think it is high time for us now that if elections are conducted, the winners uh, will be sworn in and the losers will just congratulate the newly elected uh, executive national officers. But where questions of credibility of the election are arising, definitely we must have an electoral reforms. And I believe the current president I know him as a gentleman, as a man of integrity, will certainly do something to address the issue of our elections. Mr. That Alassane. Thank you very be, much. Um, uh, we're we're yeah. out of time. I'm really sorry to keep interjecting. I'm being whispered to that we're out of time. So I'll just thank you both ge uh, very uh, generously, uh, Mr. Sani Ibrahim and Buffer Alassane, for joining us on the program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm. All right, uh, just you. your final thoughts quickly on the way uh, forward. Is two years enough for Mr. Pata to actually make an impact on the MBA? If you can do this in 30 seconds, please. Even one year is enough um, for a man who has his plan set out. Uh, you must not achieve everything, but um, if you set the priorities right, you would be able to achieve at least. There are low-hanging fruits. Uh, my colleague talked about... Um, electoral reforms. You can't, you know, it's, um, it's, the world is dynamic. You keep changing with time. And, and so there are a lot of issues, like I've, I've talked about um, human rights um, abuses, you know, MBA redirecting its focus on, you know, consistently pointing the way forward to the government. And then, you know, the issue of corruption also. Um, the, the, all of these are issues that, you know, you can, you can tackle headlong and, you know, in the next six months, people will begin to see changes and then you can also use that as an opportunity to win, you know, more confidence in members. Mr. Shoma, thank you very much for joining us on the program.